All right, 10.35. Well, again, we want to try to use the same techniques that we've been using on the previous problems. And remember, you're not expected to know the answer to this just in the very first instant. You have to kind of figure it out step by step. So any little thing that you can figure out is going to be helpful. first step, putting in some numbers. Good. Well, we might all have different numbers here, but these are uh, reasonable numbers. And the key point here is that you're realizing that this carbon is probably the same in both of these pictures. So it should get the same number, and probably these should get the same numbers. pretty much on the right track. Good. And break the double bond. That's good. And break the double bond and form an alcohol on good. the least substituted carbon. Excellent. That's a very important thing. your PCC, right? I think so. PCC does that. But PCC doesn't work on alkenes. Oh, it doesn't? It doesn't, does it? Why not? Yeah, so it works we have- on alcohols. That's right. Oh. Um, I thought BH3, right, is the one that goes to the non-substituted yes, carbon? Yes, that one does as well. And then there's an acid. So to protonate. To protonate it. Okay, good. So what would you do first? So what would, I mean, if I'm just looking at this, what should I be asking myself now? Okay, I see that the oxygen is added this one on carbon added 7 into the double bond carbon here, but what would you open there? Yeah, there. The best thing to do here is to ask, is to say this is a carbonyl and ask yourself what ways do I know to make carbonyls? Because I think you've only learned two ways to make carbonyls so this term. So it's best to work on retrosynthesis here because there's only two ways to make this carbonyl. Okay. Uh, and then if you know those ways, then you can kind of work this backwards. So let's come back to that as we go. Yeah, so let's go through that together now. Oh, now we need to do PCC. No, no, that's not right. So, yeah, first of all, we need to make sure we know what PCC does. <laughs> well, we really want to use it. <laughs> good. That's a good instinct. Well, that means you need to know what type of starting material does it act on uh, and what type of product does it make. Yeah, alcohol. what type of start? Yeah, it starts with an alcohol. And what oh, does this it is the one that keeps it as an aldehyde or something, right? Yeah, that's I right. Done the alcohol that's right. Again, either. It's the one that prevents it from going to some further. Good. Right. Good. So, what type of product are we going to get here? What type of functional group? Aldehyde or ketones, just like you were saying. Oh, so that one does. Yeah, is that the, so? That's the one that you can go all the way to. The it doesn't go all the way. You keep it. PCC is the one that stops it. Now, these are both. Um, these are both just one oxidation. What we want to avoid is, is over oxidizing to a carboxylic acid. Oh, that's right. Okay. Right. Okay. okay. Um, so, uh, so what type of functional group do we have here on carbon seven? A ketone. That's right. Here we have a ketone. Um, well, uh, PCC is a great way to make aldehydes or ketones. That's right. So we can review that a little. Now, I think that at first, some of you were reversing this in your minds. Oftentimes, people think that PCC attacks aldehydes and ketones to make alcohols. Uh, but that's not what it does. It attacks an alcohol to make an aldehyde or a ketone. But that's exactly what we want here. So first we have to get an alcohol. 
Excellent. So now we're doing retrosynthesis. We know our last step is going to be PCC, but that's only going to work if we can get an alcohol, which is not what we had to start here. And you guys were already doing a good job of thinking about how to turn this into an alcohol. So, so we're going to turn the best substituted carbon. So we're going to use not our normal water acid fuel. Good. We're going to use the BH3. Excellent. Very good. <laughs> she should get credit for that. The BH3. Yeah. Um, well, maybe we all get it right on the exam. That's all I care about. <laughs> Um, how did you pick that one over? Or because the others or add to the, the other substitute. The others add to a tertiary carbon, the most substituted carbon. Mm -hmm. There's only a couple. There's only one reactant. There's only one. Oh. Yeah. Add to <laughs> at least the non-substitute. Okay. Then so we'll add OH. Anti-mafermat, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's the. Oh no, there is two. No, but the other one has a halogen also. What is it? The other one is HOCl, and then it'll send the OH to the more substituted. No, it still sends the OH to the more substituted. It sends the halogen to the least substituted. Yeah. All right, well, at the same time, I've simply uh, put the mechanism for this first step on the board. The most important thing is simply to know that this is an anti Markovnikov way of making an alcohol. It would be good to know kind of what the mechanism looks like here. Notice that um, the BH3 attacks kind of two carbons simultaneously. There's a BH2 attacking one carbon at the same time as one of the hydrogens splits off and goes onto the other carbon. Where's the head of your arrow on the hydrogen? Yeah, is it on down? the hydrogen. Oh, you mean the tail. It's on the pi bond. I didn't, uh, I should put that. So I'm not following my advice of uh, using a lot of sticks. So here. Okay. The boron takes the electrons from this bond to attack one of the carbons, and then the pi bond takes its electrons to attack the hydrogen. Oh, geez. Now, why would the boron prefer to attack carbon 7 and not carbon 2? Because of hindrance, right? Steric hindrance, that's right. Remember that two main ways to predict regiochemistry are electronics and sterics. Electronics means forming a more substituted carbocation or radical, and sterics means going where there's less hindrance. How do I know that electronics are not important here? Because when I look at the mechanism, we never formed any carbocations. Since we never formed any carbocations or radicals here, there was no electronics to stabilize. Well, we could, right? Well, we simply need to have memorized that the, react that the mechanism for BH3 does not That's involve not any carbocations. If we have memorized that this is what the mechanism looks like for BH3, then we can see from the arrows that we're not forming any carbocations. That tells us that there's no um, electronics involved, and so that this is going to be determined, the regiochemistry will be determined by the sterics, which puts the boron on the less substituted carbon. If you think about most of the other alkene additions that you've learned, most of the other ones are Markovnikov, and the reason is because they have carbocation intermediates. If you go through those mechanisms, they have a carbo. You were already mentioning the other way to do this would be water plus acid. That would be number C. Number C, water plus acid. But in that case, the first thing you would do is form a carbocation. And that would then uh, put the carbocation on the more substituted carbon. But there's no carbocations here. So sterics rules the regiochemistry. And the boron goes here. And then this step, we won't worry about the mechanism at all. We just memorize that this kicks off the boron and replaces it with an alcohol. So you simply need to have memorized that, like they say in part L, there's two steps to this addition of an alcohol. You should know the mechanism for the first step. You shouldn't worry about the mechanism for the second step. We should just memorize that it kicks off the boron and replaces it with an alcohol in the same place that the boron used to be. This is called hydroboration oxidation, right? Because the first step was hydroboration, putting in the hydro and the boron. And then we oxidized this carbon by forming a bond to oxygen. Remember that oxidation means forming a bond to oxygen. So um, then you guys came up with that. So that's our anti-Markovnikov addition. 